How do you trust them? You don't. Trust in yourself, invest in things that you control and nobody else can, and make sure you keep your eye on the ball. Hey there. Welcome to The Simple Podcast, and I'm Todd C. Slater. If you're new here, just so you know, each week I'm going to be talking about everything in the world of investment real estate, and I'm going to kind of unlock some of the political influences that are happening in the world today and what it means for everybody's future and how could you secure it. This week I've got some great topics I do want to talk to you about. Of course, when we take a look at it, the CPP deductions that have been changed now. So for Canadians having to pay more into their Canadian pension plans. And what will the upcoming interest rate cuts do for the market in real estate for the people that are borrowing right now? I'm going to unload some of that so we get a better perspective of what's going to happen over the next 12 months. And of course, when I do my real estate investment tips, I want to make sure that you have a great understanding, if you're going to become a real estate investor, how you get started. So my first shot at it was I was explaining to everybody, you got to find out your why. Well, this week, we are going to be addressing financing and how important it is to you right out of the gate. Let's talk about one of the biggest things, some of the changes that the Canadian Pension Plan has thrust onto your typical middle income earner in Canada. Not only did they make a decision that they thought that they should be getting more contributions from Canadians, they actually kind of pushed it through without a lot of knowledge. So here's what they announced in 2024. If you're Canadian and you're making over $67,000, you're going to get taxed another $188 per year on top of that, so will your employer. Now, it does go up to a threshold at 74000 and everything above that, those people are getting dinged for $300 more. Now, in the big scheme of things, does this make a huge difference? Well, it does when you start talking about the benefits of the CPP. There's so many issues that we have to take a look at when we talk about the CPP. First and foremost, what happens when you die? It doesn't get passed on to your estate, doesn't get passed on to your spouse. Quite frankly, they leave you hanging. So you can pay into it for your entire life. And by the way, do you know to get the maximum number out of the CPP, you have to pay into it for 39 years. That's insane that they want to turn around and make sure you contribute to them for 39 years to get a measly stipend. Now, that stipend comes in at around $1,300 a month, about $15,000 a year. But the funny thing is right now, the average Canadian male is just over $750 a month. Here's where it gets really bad. The average female is practically half that. Now, a lot of people say, why is that? Well, I can tell you, because a lot of times females will have interruption when they're going to have kids. You know, they don't have the consistency, let's say that a male would. And again, I know I'm dating myself a little bit old fashioned here, but without the consistency, the average female is actually getting half. It's not fair. You're Canadian, you pay taxes. This should not be an issue. Now, I got a lot of people that were responding to some of my comments on this topic, and they kept saying, well, hang on, Todd, you know, it's not really a tax. Well, it is when you start applying it the way they have, you know, they do tax you to this. The government may not be in control of it, so they say, but it's amazing how the government's stepping in on every aspect of Canadian income trying to take as much out from them as humanly possible, and of course, giving it away to other countries. Right now, the tragedy sits here at home because there are so many Canadians struggling, so many people that are homeless, and at the same time, our gates are wide open. So the next part of my topic then is this. Why is it that we can't trust the government? Well, if you're thinking about your retirement, don't. As I said earlier, the CPP, if you if you end up dying or your spouse ends up dying, you do not get any, any aspect of that. They do maximize it. Now, what if you're a good Canadian, you turn around, you have a pension. Do you know that they can claw back your CPP if your pension is too strong? So you could contribute it your entire life. You could sit there and put yourself on the right track. You could get an amazing pension and they can claw back your CPP. So you put all that money out there for nothing. Now, on top of that, 
let's talk about the thing that's really, really scary that most of us don't want to look dead in the eye. That's what we call our RRSPs, okay? When we talk about your registered savings plan, when you turn around, all it is, and so we're clear, that is just a tax deferral system. But here's what a lot of people don't understand, and I want every one of my viewers to understand this one point. If you die, let's say you have $500,000 in your RRSPs, if you die, that becomes taxable income that year to your estate. 50% bye-bye. The government takes a raise every single time you die when we have these kind of savings that were all driven by the government. So where's the motivation? How do you trust them? You don't. Trust in yourself, invest in things that you control and nobody else can, and make sure you keep your eye on the ball. There is going to be a lot of changes coming our way. When governments get this far in debt, when they turn around and they send all their money elsewhere, we know that they're going to keep continuing to come after more and more money. If that's the case, then we have to be very, very concerned about what they're going to do to the RSPs. Are they going to increase the taxation on it? Are they going to turn around and increase certain fees on it? Well, that's a reality. It's just, it's not if, it's when. And that's one of the things you, we all need to be concerned about. So is there a, a, a magic answer to the government? No. Most politicians are all in the same boat. And that's all we can look forward to in the future. So again, when we talk about investment real estate, you're in control of it. You own it. This is one of the more important things that we need to take a look at. Now, this past week, Christian Freeland turned around and there was a, a clip that went viral on the internet and it was unbelievable a situation that unfolded. She was being interviewed and the gentleman interviewing him, I actually think he was probably asking about the CPP, but honestly, he turned around, got roughed up, got temporarily arrested, later let go. Is this what we expect from our government? Okay, is this the kind of thing that you can't even ask somebody a question and then they turn around and they, they end up getting roughed up, arrested with asking simple questions. As Canadians, how, many are, how much are we going to ask? So as Canadians, you know, what can we expect of our politicians other than absolutely nothing? You know, we, they, we should be able to ask questions. We should be able to and deserve answers. These are the people that have been elected by Canadians. The question is, do they work for us or do we work for them? That's the magic question that we have to understand about our government today. Who works for who? They sure seem like we're working for them at this point. And that's not right. That's not democracy. That's not an independent nation. That's nothing but dictatorship. And that's not where we need to be. So this is one of the things that we have to be very, very concerned about. One of my other topics I need to talk about, of course, is rate cuts. Okay. We hear about the U.S. Fed and the Canadian uh, banks that are going to be turning around and redoing, reducing the interest rates this year. A lot of conversation about it. The Bank of Canada, always sitting on the fence, always trying to keep Canadians at bay by saying, we might continue to increase rates unless you behave. The Fed has come out and said flat out, no, we're looking for some big cuts this year. And then, of course, out of some of the mouths of some of the economists, they're saying, no, Bank of Canada is going to have to cut at least one point. By 2025, the potential is that they could cut as much as 2.25 out of the current rate at 5%, so down to 2.75. Okay, what does that mean? What does that mean for you and I as real estate investors, as homeowners, as, you know, just Canadians? Well, it's the relief we need. You know, they're going to be a lot slower taking it back than they did putting, putting it on. And that's where the lie came from, right out of the gate. Go figure. You know, they turned around and said, no, if we're going to raise it, we're going to do it by a quarter point. Yeah. And see how many quarter points they raised? You know, we had a half, three quarter, one. I mean, so could they turn around and do it in reverse? Not likely. They're going to turn around and it's like, we'll slowly relieve the pressure because we want to keep Canadians as good Canadians and we want to make sure that nobody goes running out and makes the real estate market bounce. Well, I got news for you. 
when you turn around and at the levels that we had real estate over the past year, it's the lowest amount of transactions we've had in over 20 years. Just over 65,000 units were consumed in the greater Toronto area, which means that we are almost half of what the peak market has been. So you have to ask yourself this main important question. How many people are just sitting waiting to buy? How many people are going to take the risk and say, well, you know what? Bank of Canada is going to come down. So do we go into a very short term? Do we get ahead of the market, ahead of the bounce of the price? Because there's going to be a price bounce. What happens when people finally realize that, hey, the market's the interest rates aren't going to continue to go up. They're going to start coming down. The people that have been waiting on the fence are going to come off. They're going to be the first ones in, and then this will start to spur the increase. Now, here's the most important thing. We don't want a frenzy, okay? We can't handle a frenzy because if we have a frenzy, all of a sudden the bank can is going to jump on us. The government's going to jump on us. They're going to try to control you once again. So what will happen, in my opinion, is we should see a slow rise in the spring as we start seeing the easy tension of the actual interest rates, and it's going to happen. Now, are we going to get down to that pandemic level interest rate? Not a chance. Not unless, of course, they come up with a, they invent a new pandemic or they turn around and create a new world catastrophe. Then that's possible. But as it stands today, what is truly going to happen with interest rates? They're going to come down and they should probably plateau somewhere in a fixed mortgage rate around, call it 3.75 to 4%, which would make it very healthy. You have to qualify, but it's not, you know, you know, taking your, your firstborn. And then on top of that, the variable rate, we should be seeing something around three to three and a half percent. That makes a healthy market. That's what we're looking for. We're looking for a healthy market. This also allows real estate investors to come back into the market because this way they at least will have a break even. That's the magic in investment real estate, focusing on your break even point. I think everybody should be doing that because breaking even means that you are taking, you know, moving forward with your investment property, which means the debt goes down, values going up. And of course, if you have a neutral, that's okay. You don't need cashable tax flow right now. What we want to do is we want to turn around and start talking about that in the future. And that will be later in some of my other shows that I'm going to tell you what the best way is to control positive or negative cash flow. That'll be one of my tips that I'll be bringing. So, hey, by the way, if you haven't subscribed to my channel, make sure you do it. And if you are listening to me on Apple or Spotify, you know what? Go to my YouTube channel and subscribe. And you can catch all of my shows, my simple podcast, as well as simply real estate. You can catch everything that we do to make sure that we try to inform everybody as best that we can about the world of investment real estate. The one thing I do want to close off with today is talking about the main tip that you need to have today. I'm talking right now, January 2024. What should you be doing if you want to be a real estate investor or you already are a real estate investor? And it comes right down to brass tacks, the dollar. Okay. And when we talk about the dollar, we talk about getting an approval. See, you need all your ducks in a row before you can go out and buy. You can't just go out and buy an investment property and say, hey, you know what? I think I'll qualify. That's not the best way to go at it. So one of my major tips for all new real estate investors and all pros is make sure you know the heartbeat of your credit rating, what you can afford, where you're getting your down payment, and what you're truly looking for. It comes down to the math, folks. Numbers never lie, okay? The bank, if you're going to a standard, one of the top banks, they're going to sit there and they're going to take a look at things such as your credit report, your notice of assessment, a T4, where your income comes from. Hey, if you already own an investment property, you need to show them your expenses on that investment property, the income on that investment property. You have to divulge all of this. I can tell you it is a complete and total pain in the ass. Okay. Having to put all this stuff together is as annoying as it gets. And it seems like every time you give the lenders that extra piece of paper, they want two more pieces of paper. And as a real estate investor, I can tell you it's one of the things that I hate the most. But if you don't have it, 
you're not going to get the funding, which means you're not going to get the property. So we kind of have to suck it up and we have to make sure that we've got all our ducks in a row. This is the best time to do it, January. You know what? We've got tax season coming up. Hey, it's going to help you get everything arranged and set up. But more importantly, opportunity is in front of you today. The market is going to shift. With interest rates going down, values are going to go up. When is it that you decide to pull the trigger on your first or one of your multiple properties? This is up to you. But all I can tell you is make sure you have your ducks in a row. That's one of the most important things you can possibly do. Like I said earlier, you know what? Make sure you uh, subscribe to my YouTube channel. Uh, we are going to continue to really drill down the world of investment real estate in North America. I will talk about the U.S. sometimes. I will be talking about Canada on a regular basis. You know what? North America is really the real estate investors hub. You know, and this is the thing. When we take a look at the political aspect of things, we've got the major U.S. election coming up. Oh my God, what is going to happen there? Well, I can tell you the existing president is going to start pushing the U.S. Fed to turn around and drop their interest rates because they've got to look good on paper for the U.S. election. And right now, there's a lot of things happening in Canada where, again, the political arena is just muddied with people that should not be in it. Here's hoping that we're going to have some big changes in North America over the next 24 months. Most importantly, interest rates going down, easing some of the pressure on you and your family. And don't forget, you need to be able to get invested and protect your future. One of the most important things, generational wealth, watching out for your kids and yourself. If you don't do it, the government won't. And that's one of the most important things you've got to remember. Thanks for tuning in this week. I'm looking forward to bringing you up to date on more things as they uncover. And again, you can go to my Instagram as well, The Simple Investor One. I'll be pushing out some little clips every once in a while and telling you what's what. Anyways, thanks for tuning in.